So today, this is going to be part two, or I should say the second version of the Donald Trump full 60 minutes interview. I did the I did this video yesterday, Donald Trump full 60, inter, 60 minutes interview. He walked out in this video. This is basically the full unedited version with no commentary. Today, I'm going to give you my commentary, my thoughts on what took place here. My primary reason for doing this, I want people to recognize no matter whether you're independent, Republican or Democrat, that we need to hold our political figures and our media personalities to some sort of standard or some sort of account. We get manipulated by our own political beliefs so many times and the media does it and the politicians do it. So I want to try to be unbiased as I possibly can as I go through this and give my comments and please feel free to let me know down in the description uh, of this video down in the comments. Please let me know if you agree to disagree. By the way, if you don't want to wa hear my commentary, I'll link it above. I'll put it down in the description. You can come watch this full version of this video yourself and then maybe come back and listen to my commentary. See if you agree. See if you disagree. All right, let's get started. Are you ready for some tough questions? <clears throat> You're going to be fair. Are you I'm going to be fair. Just be fair. But last time I remember you saying to me, Bring it on. Bring it on. No, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for fairness. That's all. You're going to get fairness. Okay. But you're okay with some tough questions. No, I'm not. You're not okay with tough questions. Well, I'm going to be fair. You, you don't ask Biden tough questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't need It's terrible. Biden. I don't need to be you. <laughs> you know that. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. So the one thing is, I don't have a problem with her asking, are you ready for tough questions? I think that's, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I wish more media pundits would ask our politicians, presidents, congressmen, et cetera, tough questions. So I don't really have a problem with that. However, it's you can tell that he's a little bit concerned and you can say rightfully so or not, but you can tell that he's a little bit concerned that this might not be an unfair interview or it might not be a fair interview, sorry. And that makes me feel like this could affect his how he responds throughout the interview potentially or he could be prone to respond a certain way but let's continue watching and see what happens everybody ready yeah. okay can i start one second close the door have your up a little dog am i okay you're good okay yeah. i'm ready so we have the pandemic on your watch we've had racial strife we've had looting why do you want this job? Why do you want to be president again? Because we've done a great job and it's not finished yet. And when I finish, this country will be in a position like it hasn't been maybe ever. Uh, the economy is already roaring back and uh, other people aren't going to bring it back. Certainly the person that we're dealing with is not going to bring it back. They're going to raise taxes. They're going to take away your Second Amendment. They're going to do things that nobody would even believe. It's radical. There's never been anything like it. No. Let me we ask are. You. We are positioned me, like never before we're going to have a fantastic year next year let me ask you what you think your uh the biggest domestic priority is for you right now uh well ultimately let, let me and I, i'll tell you it was happening we created the greatest economy in the history of our country and the other side you was know coming that, you in. know that's not true it is totally true no. best unemployment numbers best employment numbers 160 million people working highest stock market price you wouldn't say that to Biden, what you just said to me. If he had it, if he had it, you would never say that to Biden. We had the best stock market price ever. Now we're getting close to that price again. Okay, so right here, first for her first couple of questions, why do you want this job? You know, th those first couple of questions were good questions. Like the, there's nothing wrong with that, except she starts almost right away. Like even with her second question, she cuts in to start to cut him off. Now. I don't know how many times you've watched presidential interviews in the past, but of all presidents, they the media almost always on these types of interviews with 60 Minutes and whatnot, they very rarely a ask really hard questions, and they oftentimes give the president there's like this little presidential respect. Now whether you you think Trump deserves it or not, or he's you know kind of a gritty personality anyway, it's just a fact of pointing historically. Um, there's oftentimes a little bit of kind of kit gloves and it doesn't matter if it's Fox News interviewing a Democrat president or if it's the mainstream media interviewing a Republican president. There's always a certain level of almost respect there. But right off the bat, the first thing that caught me off guard is, wow, like she's just interrupting him. And I don't know if she's looking for I don't know why she would do that. I don't know what her intention is on that. It's it's almost like this was planned from the beginning because remember in the beginning she said are you ready for tough questions she's really wanting this to be a tough interview but now he's doing 
typical presidential political spin. You know, everything's, you know, rosy, everything's getting better, and he's the reason it's getting better, which is what you would expect from a politician, including the president of the United States. But l let's keep going. When he just, when the thing that blew me away when he said that we had one of the best economies we've ever had, that's actually not debatable according to most people in the mainstream media, depending on how you determine an economy. Now, I feel like we've had massive inflation or at least an environment that's going to create massive inflation, et cetera, et cetera. And I've, and I've got my own questions with how the economy was being ran. However, based on the unemployment numbers, based on the stock market, it's not really debatable that we've had historic low unemployment prior to the pandemic. And we've had incredible, incredible, uh, the stock market's done incredibly well which is great for people's 401ks. It's great for those investors and those CEOs of those companies. So the idea that she's like, no, no, we didn't. I, when I, as soon as I heard that, I thought, what in the world is she talking about? Like, that's not, that's not a winning card for her here in this interview. Like that's not the vast majority of people watching would just disagree with that right away. Let's keep going. We had the best. Everything was the best. Our companies were doing better than they've ever done before. You cannot even think about talking about that. Well, I don't, I'm not going to fact check you. Know, well, you don't have to fact check me. That. I mean, excuse but, me. But, the stock market was at its highest. The unemployment numbers for African Americans, for Asian Americans, for Hispanic Americans, for everybody with a. So it's interesting. She said, I'm going to fact check that. The first time I watched this interview and I saw that, I thought, fact check? I mean, it's public record and mainstream. Like, what are you fact checking and you know again i almost wonder like why give that comment now of course trump is like everything is always better and he always talks in this hyperbole everything every number every company no not every company not everything um absolutely not everything but when she was like i've got to fact check that that might be one of the more ridiculous comments in the entire interview <laughs> the best every number virtually every number was the best we had the best economy ever. And what was happening is things were coming well, together. Well, I asked you what your single biggest well, No, I, I, I'm going to say that. Oh. And the other side was starting to call, let's get together. There was going to be unity. And then we got hit with the plague. And we had to do it again. And we closed it up. And I saved millions of lives. Millions of lives, we saved. And now the economy is growing again at record numbers, 11.4 million people employed in the last short but period of time. what's the priority? I mean, those are all the yeah, good things. The priority now small? is to get back to normal. Get back. He said the priority is to get back to normal, but here she is interrupting again. It's really a different decorum than what you typically see out of a news outlet like 60 Minutes. I mean, it almost caught me off guard. What do you think? Am I right on that? Like, have you seen a lot of 60 Minute interviews, especially of presidential candidates or presidents and vice presidents? Like, doesn't it feel a little bit awkward already with her questioning? And I almost wonder if this is going to be edited in such a way that it didn't look so rough. Uh, it didn't look so gritty on her part because they can edit it to make it look quite gentle on her part because if you listen to her tone and stuff her questions even though she's interrupting even though she's being extremely pointed and and a little bit odd in her questioning her tone is very calm and very mellow where they can just cut that sound bite out and then cut away to one of his answers or part of his answer you understand like sometimes when you see it edited you might not even hear the whole answer and by the way that's not just donald trump or anything that's just how editing works in television back to where we were to have the economy rage and be great with jobs and everybody be happy and that's where we're going and that's and, where we're heading and who is our biggest foreign adversary i would say china they're an adversary they're, they're a competitor and they're a foe in many ways but they're an adversary uh, i think what happened was disgraceful should never have happened should they should never have allowed this plague to get out of china and go throughout the world 188 countries should never have happened. So there. So Leslie, one second, please. Um, one question. Okay. Now there's something they're fixing in the background. There's something distracting here. So they're, they're going to take a pause in the action while they fix that, the producers or whatever. Uh, it's, I think it's something in one of the camera shots on their end. This camera shot we're looking at is just a White House, I think like archival type camera, but they have other cameras for 60 minutes. Now I want to say something here. It's, it's really interesting that he talks about China being an adversary. And she asks him, who's our biggest adversary? He talks about they're an adversary. There's a, they're a foe in some ways. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one thing that I would recommend that you do. 
a little bit of basic research on. I did a video, I think it was yesterday, when I did a video on my channel talking about uh, China. Trump talks about disliking China and that they're always an adversary. But the reality is a lot of his accomplishments as a president, he's had to go into debt to do that. Well, that debt, 15% or 18% of that debt, I had a chart on my channel on the video I did a couple of days ago. China and Japan own about 30% of our entire debt as a country. So it's very interesting that he's always talking about China. And I think he's right to talk about China, but it's difficult to talk about China, call them an adversary, call them a foe, saying that, you know, they did a lot of things, you know, that, um, you know, they take advantage of us in trade, et cetera, et cetera. All that can be true. But at the same time, we as a country have to do better with our, our spending overall, not just under the Trump administration. Historically, China bar lends us a tremendous amount of money. We talk about competing with them, but we literally could not afford for China at this point to stop letting us borrow money. And one more thing, I think it's interesting that he talks about the plague coming from China. I, I kind of like that he says this now unabashedly because now we do know for a fact that it did start and originate in China. It is where it came from, at least by all accounts that we can verify, the best we can verify. We do know that China was feeding the world misinformation. The reason I think this is incredible that he says this now is because several months ago, the rest of the world was actually saying things like, you know, oh, the, the rest of the world, the rest of the political world uh, in the U.S. was or I should say the Democrat side, was really beating him up for saying this. They were calling him xenophobic and all this stuff. Um, and, and thankfully, in this case, Donald Trump's a type of president that for whatever reason, that sort of name calling or criticism doesn't tend to bother him so much. He felt strongly enough to take some of the policies that he did take. Um, but I think it's interesting to see him call it the China plague and all this stuff so unabashedly and unashamed right here knowing that he's doing a 60 minutes interview i just and, and she gives she by the way that's the one thing that she does not come against by the way when he says that i just think that's a little bit fascinating and it's worth noting what's wrong the, 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 the flag is wobbling i think because it's under was bent up perhaps behind you Tom. his hair's coming down a little bit <laughs> Um, it's it's you, right? It doesn't look nice blowing No, it's, it's distracting. No, it's I can see it. Yes, from the arrow. Okay. I think we're better, guys. I'm, I'm going yep. with or without you guys. It's not moving. No, Let's go. Not. Okay, at this stage, four years ago, you were behind in the polls. She ran out and you pulled it out. But this time, you have kind of a double migraine. You have unemployment claims going up. You have COVID cases going up. I mean, it's like the gods have suddenly decided decided to conspire against you. I don't think so at all. No, I think well, we've done a great job these, with COVID, yeah, and we've hired. The numbers are going up. Excuse so. me, 11.4 million people. Why? Because the last report was a little bit, just a little bit off, and this no, is without. Sir, excuse me. Cases are up in about 40 okay, states. Okay, you know why cases are up also? Because we do more testing. If we didn't do testing, cases would be way down. But why are you saying they're not up? You know, you're saying things that people I don't can know what see. I'm saying to you, Leslie, is the following. We do more testing than any country in the world by far. Second is India with 1.5 billion people. We do more testing. If we did half the testing, we'd have half the cases. If we did no testing, like many countries, we would have very few cases. Because we do so much testing, the fake news media loves to say cases are up. The fact is we've done a very, very good job. Cases are up. We have done, that's right, because we're doing so much testing. I want to point out the fact that this, again, repeatedly interrupting, like he doesn't even get four or five words out a couple of times and she fires back at him. Now, the challenge here is, you know, no one actually, here's the problem with this political statement about cases being up. We really don't know exactly everything about why the cases are up. We don't understand how much of our, there's no way to quantify. There's projections, there's scientific guesstimates, but there's no way to quantify. Like at one point in time, when I tell people, hey, you know, they were predicting this thing back in like February or March, they were saying that, you know, by the summertime, we'd have 2 million Americans dead. When I say that, people don't realize, they, they're, they're like, what, no, -uh. that's not true. But it is in fact true. In fact, they mentioned it here in a moment. But the question is, how come 2 million people aren't dead? A lot of people are like, well, it's because of all of the, the social distancing and the lockdowns and so on and so forth, mask, whatever. That may be true, but there's actually no way to truly quantify that. Is it, I mean, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Is it possible that our, our, our earlier projections were off and maybe, you know, we were never going to have 
2 million people dead. Maybe hypothetically we would have had 1 million. And, and I'm just saying that because scientific projections are never 100% accurate. They're just that projections. But it's interesting how it becomes a political football for both sides here. She's doing it and, and he's spinning it the other way as well. Um, but overall, the commentary here, I mean, she's just trying to drill and drill and drill. And, and again, I, I, it doesn't seem like her questioning is fair or unbiased. Like she's looking to prove a point. Um, am I wrong here? Let me know down in the comments. Cases? Will you at least say cases are up? Yes, cases are up because we are doing tremendous testing and we're finding where there's a problem. Testing is a good thing, but it's also very misleading. When you're out there saying we've turned the corner, this thing is disappearing. That's and right, we have turned the corner. See, we have turned people the corner. can see cases going up all over the, in the Midwest, in the Mountain West. Record numbers of cases We have turned the corner. States. We understand the disease. We understand the elderly and we're taking care of them at a level like nobody's ever taken care of the elderly, especially the elderly with diabetes problems, heart problems. We are taking care of them like nobody's ever taken care of them. We also understand youth, 99.9%. .9%. As an example, Barron had it and it was gone in no time. It was just like he had it, it was gone. Hardly knew he even had it. So we are taking care of our people. But uh, we've done a great job with the ventilators, with the equipment, with stocking governors that were not stocked. We've made a lot of governors look very good that shouldn't look good, and that's okay with me. Okay, let me, let me ask you something about suburban women. Yeah. You said the other day to suburban women, will you please like me, please? Oh, I didn't say that. You know, that's so misleading the way. I say jokingly, suburban women, you should love me because I'm giving you security and I got rid of the worst regulation. See, the way you said that. I just, I just want to say right here, this is so, this part, as soon as she said that, I thought, oh, wow, that's such mischaracterizing what he said. And I actually did not see this. So maybe I'm speaking out of turn. But, you know, Trump says a lot of things at his rallies and I've you know seen maybe two or three of his rallies and I've never watched a full one but you know he does say things like you're gonna love me you're gonna love me don't you guys love me you know aren't you gonna love me and so I could almost see him saying you know basically please vote for me come on please vote for me not in a, a begging way and it's interesting to see this the way she characterizes this I mean does does Donald Trump strike anyone as the type of person who's going to publicly beg or grovel. I mean, the guy's a lot of things, narcissist, big headed, egotistical. The fact that he's going to sit out there and, and plead with any population as an intentional plead. I mean, that, that would just be uncharacteristic uh, of the man completely. And it's just interesting to see this, you know, again, it's almost like she's playing a political football instead of just giving an interview. Yeah. Is why people think of you and everyone else as fake news. I said kiddingly, suburban women, women, you should love me. I got rid of a regulation that would bring low-income housing into suburbia that is destroying, that would destroy suburbia. And I said that in a joking way. The way you have it, it's like, oh, like I'm begging. I, I'm kidding. Play it. And I'm kidding. That is such a misleading question, Leslie. This is interesting. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this policy that he's referring to. There, there was a policy, I think it was started by the Obama White House. It was going in, it was getting enacted. But the idea was to move. I mean, I think some of the intention behind the policy was good, but I think it was bad on all part, on all accounts. The idea was to move public housing or the projects into suburbia. So they would be more out in suburban neighborhoods. But I thought to myself, how is this a good thing for the people that's moving out there? I get that you, you can argue that it, it could be better from a standpoint of, I see the argument how it could be better. You're, you're getting out of the inner city, et cetera, et cetera. But you're also moving people that are in poverty away from things like public transportation is not going to be as good in the suburban areas, being able to easily walk and get access to certain stores and whatnot, uh, grocery stores or, uh, you know, restaurants, fast food, whatever. You're not going to have as much access within walking distance. You know, having been around projects for a portion of my life, like that's, that's the lifeblood of those projects. So it's, 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 it's crazy to think that you're going to move them out in the middle of suburbia where, you know, in the town that I grew up in, where they were looking to put one of these areas, there was no public transportation going to that place. And there was like nothing there. 
I just found that such an odd policy that they were going to enact. And that's the one that he's referencing right now. And he's saying he saved suburbia because with low income housing comes violence, et cetera, drugs, whatever you feel about that. So be it. Um, but he's saying, you know, he's basically saved suburbia from that to each his own. I guess that topic's debatable. It's a very interesting, it's a very interesting, interesting policy that they were about to enact that now they currently aren't because he, via executive order, I believe he ended it. Behind the suburban women in the poll, I doubt it. I doubt it. I really doubt it. One of the I'm saving. Okay, by every major poll, Donald Trump is way behind with suburban women. Just for the record, so to see him say he doubts it, that's just you know he, that's just his political spin. He doesn't want. There, a lot of people will vote for who or what they believe is popular, and a lot of people will not vote if they think somebody is losing. So there's always this push from the Republican side to make it look like they're winning, and there's always this push from the Democrat side to make it look like they're winning. And the reason is because there's a certain segment of the population that will simply vote for the winner, no matter who it is, and they know that. So they're careful not to show their weaknesses as a campaign. Suburbia. He's going to destroy suburbia. He's got a regulation which I terminated that he would put back and even worse that will destroy, that will bring low income housing projects into suburbia. And women understand that. And they've really learned about it over the last two, three weeks. I terminated the worst regulation you could possibly have. It's gone. And suburban women appreciate it. They want security, they want safety. Look. I've been endorsed by almost every police department, almost every law enforcement group in the country. He's been endorsed by almost nobody. Suburban women want security. The, poll the reason that he's the reason it's big news that he's been endorsed by law enforcement is because historically all law enforcement unions, unions in general, particularly law enforcement unions, almost always universally, universally uh, support the Democratic candidate. So it's a big deal. Um, for a Republican candidate to be able to get the endorsement from actual unions of the law enforcement agencies. Polls show that you're behind with uh, them. And one of the reasons, let me you're say You're not looking this, at recent polls. One of the reasons is that they don't feel you're being upfront about the pandemic. And so, when you say, we're, you know, there are fewer, we're rounding the corner. And we are rounding the corner. The okay, I want to point this out. She brought back up the pandemic. And she got brought back his statement about rounding the corner that they just left about a minute and a half ago at about five and a half minutes. She, they started talking about the pandemic and health crisis and stuff. Now she's managed to bring it up. That's going to be significant throughout the rest of this interview. So let's keep watching. We are rounding. We deliberately like to downplay this. We are rounding the corner. Are We're rounding the downplay? corner. We're doing well. We're doing well. We understand the disease. I saved millions of people, you know, 2.2 million people were supposed to die. You go back and you look at your models, models, 2.2 million people. We saved tremendous numbers of people. Plus, I closed it very early from China, heavily infected, and even from Europe, heavily infected. We've done a good job. We've done maybe a great job. What we haven't done a good job on is convincing people like you, because you're really quite impossible to convince, but that's okay. And the economy now is coming back, and it's coming back very strongly. And people see that, Leslie. There are more. I think it's interesting when he talks about shutting down China. I want to. This is one area that I can be very critical of Trump, but this is one area that he doesn't get enough credit for. When he closed down flights coming from China, he absolutely was called xenophobic and racist. And I think that there now universally everyone agrees that was the right thing to do in hindsight. And that's. Part of the problems probably of being a president or any political leader is that your actions today, you're not going to know the full ramifications of whether they were good or bad till, you know, history looks back upon them. But at that time, that took a lot of cojones to be able to shut down flights coming from China originally. Nobody practically, even in his own party, very few people supported that decision. And it was a decision that he made. And I think that this goes to him not being as much of a politician because I can't imagine any other president in my lifetime who would have just simply said, yeah, that's a good idea because they would not have wanted to risk being called racist or whatever. So therefore they wouldn't have done it. Uh, but he did it and it ended up being the right decision at the time. I think he at least deserves credit for that. Unemployment claims. I mean, the economy has kind of 
Leslie, we just picked up 11.4 million jobs. It's the largest number in the history of our country in a short period of time. I mean, how can you ignore that? We just picked up 11.4 million jobs. It's in a short period of time. It's the largest number in the history of our country. So are you denying that the unemployment claims have gone up? Is that what, what I'm saying happen? is we got hit by something, sure. not my fault, not no, your fault. No. We got hit from something that came out of China. I got stuck with it. And let me tell you, before it happened, we were doing so good, and now we're going to be doing, and we are, we are doing good. But well, look at look at as an example. Last week, a few days ago, Gallup did a poll. Fifty six percent of the people said that they're better off now during a pandemic than they were during Obama and Biden. Fifty six percent. It was a record number. Right? Yes. But I want to know if you're if you're what, ignoring the fact that there are Unemployment claims? No, I don't ignore okay, it. Okay, well, what, what, what are you saying? Well, what I'm saying is that we got hit with somebody. It's not our fault. Isn't that crazy? Like, what is he saying? He's saying that employment went up 11 something million jobs. Like, again, it's almost like she's grasping for some sort of a soundbite there. There's, there's almost no point to that question. I mean, I can't help but in my mind, you know, kind of thinking, the opposing side here. I'm like, what, what is she fishing for? Is she not getting the soundbite that she wants? Uh, what is she fishing for? Like his question, I mean, his answer was, he answered her question plainly and thoroughly, probably more thoroughly than he should. He can't get long winded, but she just, well, what are you saying? As if she wasn't listening. Oh, we got hit. And we've done a good job, not a good job. We've done a great job. Remember that number, a very important number, 56% say they're happier now than they were four years ago under Biden and Obama, right? I'll put his name first. Biden and Obama, and they didn't have a pandemic, although Biden did have a big problem with H1N1, which he says in reverse, with the H1N1 swine flu, and it was a disaster. And his own chief of staff said it was a total disaster they didn't know what they were doing. Well, can we go back for one second to the pandemic? Because um, you called... Can we go back for one second to the pandemic? Has she left it yet? Has she left it at all? Dr. Fauci and other health officials, idiots. And Dr. I'm Fauci, I'm wondering, where did I go? Where did I go? I'm wondering where, if you... Where did I go? Idiot? You called them idiots. I wonder if well, you... He's been wrong a lot. I like them, but he's been wrong. I wonder if you think that masks don't work. Is well, that Dr. Fauci originally saying? said, you know, it's a very well, complex subject. But what do subject. you say? Do you say well, let me, masks don't Let me just tell you, you work. mentioned that Dr. Fauci said, don't wear masks. Then he said, wear well, them. What do you I think? say that I, I feel masks possibly work. But certainly you want to stay away a certain distance, socially distance, etc. But I would say a mask works, and I have nothing against masks, and I tell people to wear masks. I have well, no tell problem. Tell me about these rallies you've been having. A lot of people are wearing people, masks, and they're outside. Are- By the way, this is a tee up. She was totally teeing this up so she could go to the rallies. I think it's crazy how to do this. By the way, I want to say something about masks for a moment. You know, year, when this thing came out, I I have known something interesting about masks for many years, and that is Asia as a general rule, as a general culture, they'll wear masks for anything. Like if they have a little bit of cold, if they have a blackhead or a pimple or some sort of scratch on their face, they don't want people to see. For whatever reason, that culture is very common or at least far more common than in the U.S. to put a mask on for the day and to wear it around. Like that's not that's just a cultural difference, for example, in some Asian countries versus other parts of the world. When this pandemic broke out, I have always sort of paid attention, been fascinated by pandemics in the world. Um, Like Ebola broke out. I paid attention when swine flu. Uh, CDC has said for years that the world was due for a major pandemic. Ironically, I don't think that this current one is it. But anyway, the so I've always kind of sort of paid attention to that stuff in the news media. And as soon as it came here, Dr. Fauci, I will never forget watching him the first time say that there was no need to wear a mask. And I immediately went to some of my friends in the healthcare field and I was like, would you wear a mask? Like, do you think you should wear a mask? 
universally they were all like wear mask wear mask i was telling my family members hey if you can get masks you know go ahead and get them buy them on amazon whatever and for the ones that would listen and i had people tell me you don't need them you don't need them you don't need them in our family we were actually wearing masks we would go to the store the only ones me my wife the kids we'd have masks on the only ones people looked at you like you were crazy and it was because they were saying at the time not to wear masks that i just find it so fascinating that within a matter of weeks, they did a reverse turn on that. Now, they say it's for the PPE, for, you know, the healthcare workers, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little conspiratorial or whatever. I just, uh, they, they've changed their tune on this mass thing. It's been so weird. And I don't think we've ever got the full facts on what that was truly all about. I just feel like there was a little something more going on there. I could be wrong. And the reason that I say that is because several reasons. Dr. Fauci, Nancy Pelosi, Donald Trump, and Mike Pence have all seen, been seen in very public places when they were saying, you know, wear a mask. They were all seen without mask at the time. And it just, I just find it very fascinating that masks are such a big deal now. We're supposed to be wearing masks. But since they've said that, Fauci was at a baseball game, Nancy Pelosi was at a salon, uh, Donald Trump and Mike Pence were going, visiting factories doing like sort of pre campaign type stuff uh, months back. And in both cases, it was a news story that, you know, individual news story that they weren't wearing masks. There's just something up about this mask. But no matter what, no matter what you think or what you choose to believe or what the real story may or may not be, it is a political football to no end. I wish us as American people would just ask more objective questions like what is the definitive answer? Like, what is that? And, and where is that definitive answer coming from? And if that is the definitive answer, why are politicians that are clearly in the at-risk category not wearing their mask at appropriate times? It's just worth thinking about. Let's get back to this Leslie lady beating him up over the pandemic again. Now, mind you, we were on the pandemic at five and a half minutes. She hasn't left it yet. We're at 13 minutes in. But I, I'm watching all these people jammed in together. And I'm seeing most of them without masks. And I'm wondering the message that you're sending with these pictures coming across. Take a look. Yesterday, we were in Arizona, record-setting rallies, numbers of people like nobody's seen before. We many, many masks. I watched. You, what? what? You used to have bigger rallies. No, these are much bigger than I ever had. I don't want to pick a girl up You know, Tell you, me you're so negative. Rally. You're so negative. These are the biggest rallies we've ever had. You just come in here with that negative attitude. These are the biggest rallies we've ever had. We are having numbers like we've never had. Tell me about the There masks. is more, excuse me, no, but you made a statement. There's more enthusiasm right now for us than we ever had before, ever. And you will see that in a short period of time. Well, what about the masks? A lot of people are wearing masks. I mean, I looked yesterday, a lot of people will, and it's outdoor. They want it outdoor, and we're doing it outdoor. But I can't believe after what happened in the Rose Garden here, after the announcement, with all the people getting sick, yeah. that you are not being more strongly encouraging about wearing masks I, at your I tell people to wear but masks. But you don't. Leslie, we hand out thousands of masks. But you look out, and you're not wearing them. And you don't say, please, what are you Well, and you've been looking yesterday. Take a look at, uh, take a look yesterday in Arizona. Everybody behind me. But I'm so she said, you don't ask them to wear masks. So is this entire line of questioning? I'm watching it. So I'm like, so what are you going, what are you going for in this line of questioning? Is the entire line of questioning just for him to say, okay, I should look out in the audience and say, hey, ladies and gentlemen, will you please put your mask on? Is that what she's getting at? Like, move along here. Like, this is the American public's chance to get an idea of what this man's, how he's going to govern, what he's going to do. At this point, we understand that for whatever reason, he's resistant to the whole mass thing. At least it appears that way in many cases. Um, so is this line of questioning because you just want him to look at the audience? Or again, it's almost like she's fishing for this gotcha moment or something. I don't know. It's just a strange line of questioning that she's not letting this go. At other places, I'm looking at Wisconsin, which is a hot spot right, right now. Right, A lot of people have masks and it was outside. Masks, and you don't get up there and say, look, you know, okay. Come on. Right. What's you, what your next sick. question, Leslie? We're outside. The rallies are bigger than they've ever been. There's more enthusiasm than we've ever had. My best part when he's like, hey, what's your next question? What's your next question? He does this a couple more times. And finally, I was like, yeah, exactly. Like, move along. You've got, you know, roughly 50 minutes with this president to ask him whatever you want. And this is what you're spending your time doing. Keep going. 
There has never been anything like what you're witnessing now, and you'll see that soon. Okay, but I'm asking you about masks, not about the size of your rallies. I'm asking why you commented on the size of the room. Know, you I'm said they're not as big as they used to be, and I'm telling you they're much bigger. Okay, but I'm asking you now about the masks. Why aren't you getting up there and saying, I have Argumentative over a stupid issue. How about, how are you going to help the American public going forward? How are we going to turn this boat around? What are your actual plans? She's still on the mask. I don't want you to get it. So Leslie, please put your mask on. we hand out masks to everybody that comes to the rally. We tell them to wear the masks. And you don't, and they love you. Oh, I don't they, know, Leslie. If I tell they them wear them. Say it, I have no problem. No they problem. love you. They would pay Next question, go ahead. Go ahead. Anything you say. Okay. Uh, I hope you're right. Just for the right, he just said next question again. I love when he does that in this because I'm like, move along, lady. And here now, here's what I find so fascinating. I told you that I I'm predominantly probably pro mask. However, I find it fascinating that they expect these politicians, whether it's Biden or Kamala or Pence or Donald Trump, the, the media wants them to wear a mask, and 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 Kamala and Biden do it, wear a mask when they're on the stage at a podium. Now, mind you. They're well more than six feet away from anybody around. And at this point, it's just a political statement and it's ridiculous. And I, I find it appalling that they're making these political statements strictly about people's health. I mean, it's a, there's no reason for someone sitting at a podium talking in a microphone or into a microphone in their hand that a, a good 10, 12 feet away from someone, anyone around, you're up on a stage, no one's around you. And you have them keep the mask on the entire time. It's kind of like when the loved ones would walk up to the president. Melania did it in the last debate. The, the loved ones walk up and they have a mask on. Kamala Harris's husband, like he was wearing a diaper on his face. It was so big. And it's so, it's so awkward. You walk up to your spouse as if you didn't show up together, as if you don't live together, as you hopefully you sleep in the same bed. And they walk up to each other and... It looks awkward because they can't kiss on the cheek or nothing. They kind of give this weird, awkward hug. It's such a political football, and, and I find that so annoying because it's, it's manipulating the public through perception. Go ahead. Okay. Um, this is important. Um, okay, I'll ask you another health question. Okay. Another health question. Five minutes ago, she's taking up her time. We're still on health questions. And again, the health questions primarily are on the past not i mean let's change it to how are we going to do this moving forward um you promised that there was going to be a new health package health care plan yeah um you said that it was going to be great you, you said it's ready it's going to be it ready be. it's all ready it'll be here in two weeks it's going to be like nothing you've ever seen before and of course we haven't seen it so why didn't you develop the health plan? It is developed. It is fully developed. It's going to be announced very right. soon when you we see, see what happens over with Obamacare, which is not good. And when we see what happens with Obamacare. But if the Supreme Court... And it will be much less expensive than Obamacare, which is a disaster. And it will take care of people with pre-existing conditions. But your plan was to repeal and replace. And if the Supreme Court finishes Obamacare, there will be all these people stranded. No, there there's will, no replacement. We will make a deal and we will have a great health care plan but you keep with saying that. less expensive, uh, less expensive and a much better plan. Why haven't you seen it? Uh, you have seen it. I've been putting out pieces all over the place. I actually think that was a good question right there. Um, why haven't we seen it? Because we haven't yet seen a definitive plan. And he explained that we would see a, a more definitive plan once we figured out what was going to happen with Obamacare and the Supreme Court. But right there, that was a good question on her part. Why haven't we seen it? And he says we've seen it everywhere. If it's out there everywhere, it definitely has been promoted and talked about. The general public, even the general public who pays attention to politics, aren't exactly aware of what, even now, I haven't watched this video a couple of times, I couldn't tell you where to exactly go look at this very moment to see uh, what his health care plan is. He talks about we've, they've got pieces of it out there. Now let's watch her continue. Now I want to take note on his part. One of the very first things he mentioned is that pre-existing conditions would be covered. Now I want you to continue to watch this. She, he said that, keep in mind, he said that that was one of the first or second sentences out of his mouth when he started talking about the health plan. And we actually have plans. And we have 180 million people 
right now have a plan and you haven't been watching. You haven't been watching. But what about the pre-existing people with pre-existing conditions? There she is, back at pre-existing conditions. He, the first or second thing he even said, she's back at it. If the Supreme Court... Are protected. We'll be totally protected. How? They'll be protected, How? Leslie. I mean, the people with pre-existing conditions are going to be How? protected as they are now. How? In any plan we do, they will be protected. Leslie. People. What a horrible question when she says how the government's going to pay for it. That's how that's how it's done. Like she keeps saying about how about how that's not the right question. How about where do you intend? How do you expect to incorporate that? How do you plan to incorporate that? Where do you want to see that in the health care plan? Anything else? I mean, I think it's really kind of a dumb question anyway. When you say are pre-existing gonna, conditions going to be covered? If he says yes to that question, are you done with your line of questioning? What else are you going to ask? You may ask, how are you going to incorporate that? But where do you go from there? He's going to say, we're going to put it in a comprehensive plan once it's completed. And then what do you say after that? Again, it's almost like she's fishing for an answer that can become a sound bite. Because you got to understand, everything that he's saying now would not show up in the full interview. They would basically truncate it and it would be like one, one of these answers. When she asks a question two or three different ways, the, when it gets edited, it's going to be one of those answers, typically. But let's keep watching, see where this goes. People with pre-existing conditions will be always protected, always. But if, if the Supreme Court ends this, Obamacare... Um, well, we'll have to see what happens. It's got a ways to go. I mean, we'll see what happens. I think, I think it'll end. Uh, I, think, I, I hope that they end it. It'll be so good if they end, if they end because it. Because we will come up with a plan, we which will be a... Yeah, we will. But you said it would already. We have large sections of it already done. And we've already come up with plans. Take a look at your various secretaries, various plans that we've already come up with. And also, you know, a large part of this country has private health insurance. Yes. 180 million people. And under that, Biden, he doesn't have any clue. But under that, 180 million people will lose their health care. And they'll go to socialized medicine, and that's not going to be acceptable. Okay. 180 million people, Leslie, will go to socialized medicine. It and won't be, it, it will not be accepted. And if the Affordable Care Act is determined to be under Then we're going to have a new, whatever, then we're going to have new, and it's going to be very good. And it's going to keep saying that and don't show it to us. And so people with pre existing. We've conditions. come up with many plans, Leslie, and we have, they're already in existence. If, I'll tell you what, after this interview, I will show you short term, longer term. I'll show you different plans. We've come up with many plans. And we yeah. cut the individual mandate out. You know, the individual mandate is gone. That was the worst part of Obamacare. That's gone. Okay, I, all of that, I grant you. Okay, so here's what's interesting, and he's about to do something here with his water. But here's what's interesting. He says, after this interview, we'll show you. In my mind, good journalism would publish that somewhere like you hear him say after this interview we'll show you good journalism 60 minutes or whoever should put that on their website somewhere why is that left out because if he doesn't show you then there you go that there's there's your journalistic statement he didn't have a plan that he said he had or he does have a plan and the american people need to see what part of his plans are or at least the parts that have been completed let's see some of those but they again I don't know if there's been a statement made. I don't think it's been published anywhere. I just find that fascinating. Notice he's using two hands. I think this is really interesting. I heard him comment one time about being conscious about slips, falls, stumbles, anything that he could do that the media could pounce on. Because they did this for Hillary, and they're you know they've done it for Biden, obviously. Um, I mean, Biden struggles a little bit with his words, period. Um, but the and you see him here holding it with two hands. It looks really awkward. And I think he doesn't want to make it. I, I think he doesn't want his hand to even have a slight nervous shake. Look, I'm a lot younger than the president. And if I'm on that camera drinking water, you know, you, you still might see my hand, you know, just out of a uh, maybe I don't know if it would be a nervous quit twitch or whatever. Um, but you would see something. And he's he doesn't want the media to to play up on that. I think it's fascinating that he's that he's doing this. I think it's interesting that he's even taking a sip of water, by the way. All of that. But if if there's no plan, a replacement plan, right. and the Supreme Court says that Obamacare goes away, people with pre-existing conditions will be stranded. No. And that's just a fact. It's wrong. It's no. wrong. 
a new plan will happen. But will. And we won't do anything, will and is. We won't do anything and no plan unless we have pre-existing conditions covered. And the individual mandate, which you don't want to mention, was terminated. It was terminated. Individual mandate was terminated. I think it's interesting. She's not talking about the individual mandate. If you're not familiar with that, the way the individual mandate worked was you had to have Obamacare. And if you didn't have Obamacare and you weren't covered on, under your own insurance, you had to pay a fee. And the fee was hefty. Like at the time when I, I was actually looking, I was actually looking to end one insurance coverage, looking to get another insurance coverage. But insurance, private insurance was going up at the time because Obamacare basically required, you know, you had to have full coverage, this full coverage, that like it was crazy what, what they required. And I had more of a major deductible type, high deductible or major medical type plan where I had like a $1,500 deductible. I didn't have vision insurance and dental insurance at the time because they're not really worth it. You pay a lot of money for not getting a lot out. So I didn't want to pay for that. But Obamacare required all insurance to give vision and dental. So of course the rates were going to go up because the insurance company has to pay for that. So the rate, the premiums are going to go up. And I was looking, I was, it was a brown tax time and I was looking at what my alternatives were. And my accountant asked me, do you have uh, insurance? And I said, well, I'm about to be without it. He said, don't be without it right now. I said, why? He said, because you, A, you need to keep your insurance or go on Obamacare. He said, the, in, the individual mandate's going to kick into effect. And I want to say it was going to be something crazy. It, base, it was based off of like a percentage of your your income or whatever. I want to say the fee was going to be like $1,500 or some crazy number like that. Uh, it was whatever it was, it was ridiculous. And it was going to be going up in preceding years till he got rid of it. Now, mind you, the reason that it was in place anyway is to be able to recoup some of the costs because Obamacare costs too much without requiring people to pay that if they weren't participating. And that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother ball of wax altogether. But he, he ends that she keeps hitting him on this over and over again. And he's already said, we're getting a new health plan. Now I get that you want, you can always be skeptical. Is it going to come quick? Are you going to c- consider pre-existing conditions. All those are legitimate concerns, but what else can you say? You can't sit there and say when, when, but how, how soon, why? Like how, I get that we want to know that as we question our politicians, but what are you going to do? Like, it's crazy how she just keeps, it almost sounds childish, but why, but why, or, but when, when you said when, I mean, it's, it's really weird of an, it's a bit of a weird interview at this point. If you ask me, what are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments. That is the biggest thing that's happened, and that actually makes Obamacare not Obamacare. Because under that, you would pay a fortune for the privilege of not having to pay for bad health insurance. We got it terminated. Terminated. Through the legislature. Signed. Done. That means Obamacare is no longer Obamacare. We got rid of the most important element of Obamacare, and it was the worst element of Obamacare that nobody wanted, nobody liked. So Obamacare essentially was terminated as we know it. Now we have the carcass of Obamacare. Well, part of the carcass we've managed it well. Leslie, we've managed it well. You know, I had a choice to make. When we get rid of the individual mandate, nobody believed we could do that, and I did it. I had a choice to make. Do I manage the remainder of whatever's left of this whole thing called Obamacare, which is no good? Do I manage it well or manage it badly? If I manage it well, Man. Politically, maybe that's not well, good. I decided it. to manage it well. Do you want to leave it? I mean, no, I don't want to leave it. I want to see what it. happens. Here's what happens. Well, but we may be stuck it? with it if we lose in the Supreme Court, in which case we're wasting a lot of words. If we win, we will come up with a much, and we will do that, come up with a much better health care for much less money, always protecting people with pre-existing conditions. Um, are you going to say that you didn't say this? Because I saw you say this. Go ahead. Oh, you're, you're really trying to. I wish you. I wish you would interview Joe Biden like you interview me. That's the freaking truth right there. Like, I I don't have a problem if you want to give a tough interview, but like I'm sitting here thinking, wow, I have never seen a president get grilled like this, and some of these questions are just ridiculous. Like, it's not even what the average American consumer or citizen, whatever, wants to see. But that. It would be so good. You know what? You the, like this, the, I thought. I thought you I don't mind it. I don't mind it. But when I watch him walk out of a store, he's in the midst of a scandal. His family is corrupt. Okay, he's corrupt. He's a corrupt politician. And he's walking with a ice cream. 
And the question the media asked him, what kind of ice cream, what flavor ice cream do you have? And he's in the midst of a scandal. He's not. And he's taking, he's of course he is, not. Leslie. This is crazy right here how she says this. Like, this is crazy. She says he's not in the midst of a scandal. Like, this is amazing to watch her denial right here. Of course he is. You see that? The Senate so you're like, you're like, you're like big tech. You're protecting him. And everyone is, except for yeah, but you're, exact, people. You're, you're taking something that was investigated Leslie, by let, a let Republican ask, let ask, committee. You think it's okay it? for the mayor of Moscow's wife to give him millions and millions of dollars, three and a half million dollars, to give his family three and a half? Do you think it's okay for Hunter Biden to say, to say that we're giving we're giving the big guy ten percent of this massive amount of money they're taking in? Do you think it's okay for all of these horrible things that you've seen where they're getting hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars, where China gives them a billion and a half dollars to manage the family, a billion and a half dollars, and then he's supposed to negotiate. Let me tell you, it's the biggest, second biggest scandal. So, the biggest scandal was when they spied on my campaign. They spied on my campaign. There's Leslie. no real evidence of that. Of course there is, no. it's all over the place. Leslie, Sir, they spied on my campaign and they got can, called. Can I say something? You know, this is 60 Minutes, and we can't put on things we can't verify. You won't put it on because it's bad for Biden. We can't Look, put on you. things we can't verify. Leslie, they spied so this is ridiculous. So I actually did some research on what, what we know as a public and verifiable here. So no one will actually investigate really what's going on with the Biden for the uh, for with Hunter Biden and stuff for the most part. But he, we do know for a fact that he was sitting on the board of Burisma, which is this company, and he was getting paid like a half a million dollars a year, five hundred thousand dollars a year or whatever, with no experience whatsoever. In fact, I don't even think he had um, like any a steady job before that job, like he was between jobs or something even before that job. And it, it, it's crazy. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. We know that there's clearly signs of some sort of possible corruption. Now, by the way, corruption's everywhere. It, it's like trying to say Donald Trump's squeaky clean and, you know, there's no weird gray area that he's operated in. I'm not saying that. But for her to say, no, that's not happening. We know it's not true, so on and so forth. Um, it, it's amazing because they'll say things like, oh, it's been debunked. But it hasn't actually been debunked yet. It just hasn't even been investigated. It's really mind-blowing. Um, it's a little bit disturbing. I mean, you don't have to like Trump, but if you're going to be honest with yourself, that's that. I mean, that's horribly scary um, from the Joe Biden side. If even if it's even 20 percent true, it's kind of crazy. Now, here's the next thing. He says his campaign gets spied on. And she's like, sir, sir, you know, there's no evidence. We can't corroborate that. So on and so forth. So if you go look this up on the fat checker websites, most of them will say that it's false. And before you were like, yeah, but well, you got to understand the fact checker websites, you know, they're, they're biased too. Of course they are. They're created by humans. But most of the fact checker website will say that it's false. Obama did not spy on Trump's campaign. One of them says mostly false, I believe, something to that effect. And I thought to myself, how can something be mostly false? It's either false or it's not a false. So I did some more digging. And, and here's, it's a bit complicated, but here's essentially what happened. And there is no evidence that Obama per se spied on the campaign, but the campaign was getting monitored because the Democrat National Committee, they had this whole Russia thing, which ended up being fake evidence. It was it was actually made up. Totally 100 percent made up. The the average the average American citizen not paying attention to news media does not even know this. If you pay attention to the news, then you know this has all been debatable. But if you look for facts, like try to look for what was proven, what committee said what, what investigation, like what is the public information. Don't listen to a pundit on television. Try to go look it up for yourself. What you'll find out is there was an FBI investigation off of a suspicion of something to do related to Russia collusion. There was no evidence found. In fact, they started the investigation based off of this document they call the dossier, uh, which was submitted, but the dossier itself was faked. And by the way, originally it, it seemed like the dossier was designed just to be some sort of a uh, used for like you know just sort of some sort of campaign like hit job or spin job. They weren't. It was really just designed to throw the campaign off his campaign. But they ended up using that document. It was, in other words, it was a form of like kind of you could argue that it was unethical marketing at the time. But it ended up catching wind, and some people believed it to be fact. So the Democrats who knew that it wasn't fact allowed it to go. 
because it ended up becoming this big snowball. The FBI was researching it, assuming that it was fact. Now, the question remains, and therefore, when they said they were researching it, they were monitoring Donald Trump. They were absolutely monitoring his campaign. Call it spying, call it whatever you wanted to. They did tap in to some phones or bug an office or whatever. They, I mean, they were doing this heavy surveillance. Don't hold me to fact on exactly what it was. They were doing heavy surveillance. So the challenge is, did Obama know what his FBI was doing? Uh, the highest ranks of the FBI knew it. It's for a potential presidential candidate. I mean, if it was in fact true, it's a real threat to our democracy and to our country. So you would think the president knows this, but there's no, there's been no evidence that the president was absolutely aware of it. So therefore, they said that it was false. But circumstantial evidence, you would think, well, it would have to be true. Like he would obviously know that, right? And whether you say it was Obama or not, the Obama FBI did in fact surveil the Trump campaign as he was running for president on documentation that proved to be 100% fabricated. I mean, it's kind of crazy. You can't make this stuff up if you think about it. It's really crazy that it even happened. But here she is sort of deflecting it like, you know, that that's just not true at all. But in fact, she knows as she sits there, there is part of this that was in fact true. Like we do know that he got surveilled by the Obama campaign. That is in fact true. Like that's not. Now the reasons, did the people doing the surveilling think it was legit? Sure. Were there people who knew that they were surveilling his campaign, but also knew that they were surveilling off of something that was false? Absolutely. Absolutely. My to my campaign. It's been totally verified. It's been just go down and get the papers. They spied on my campaign. They got caught. And then they went much further than that. And they got caught. And you will see that, Leslie. And you know that, but you just don't want to no, put it on the air. As a matter of fact, I don't know that. Okay. And you're out So there. why don't you get back to your interview and let's go. Uh, we'll go. All right. Um, so you said in the briefing room, nobody likes me. I can only, it can only be my personality. I said that jokingly. That is sarcastic. Nobody likes me. It must be my personality. I say it all the time. Nobody likes me. It must be my personality. I say it all the time, Leslie. Do you think that your tweets and your name calling are turning people off? No, I think I wouldn't be here if I didn't have social media because... Fault and true. Of course it turns people off. Most people would say they don't like his Twitter feed. Most people would say that. But could you imagine if he didn't have access to Twitter? Like, do you think the average media looking at this interview would ever get any of his messaging out there? I find it fascinating. I hardly use Twitter. I, I post some of my videos on Twitter, but I'm not actively using Twitter. One of the few people I ever subscribed to as a president early on, I thought, can you imagine for the first time in history, we literally get to see what the president's thinking in real time because he's tweets off the cuff. Like that's unprecedented access to an American president to be able to even see that. I, I think it's actually historic yet. Of course, nobody likes his tweets, but could you imagine with this media? I mean, I couldn't imagine him trying to hold a press conference and try to get his messages out there because that's typically what presidents would do. They would release public, uh, press releases or they would actually call a press conference and they would interrupt, you know, television programming and say what they needed to say. And they would hear from them at like a State of the Union address or something like that. Um, that's normally what you get out of presidents here. In his case, he just tweets it. And I don't think if it wasn't for Twitter, I don't think he'd ever been president of the United States. What do you think? I mean, like him or love him, would he ever have been president if he wasn't able to tweet as a candidate? The media is uh, the corrupt. In my opinion, about. the media is corrupt. But, you know, but you the talk. media is fake. And frankly, if I didn't have social media, I'd have no way of getting out my voice. You know what you told me a long time ago when I asked why you keep saying fake in the yeah. media? Yeah. You said to me, I say that because I need to dis uh, discredit you so that when you say negative things about me, no one will believe me. I don't have to discredit you. But that's what you you've told me. You've discredited yourself. You told me that. Leslie, you've discredited yourself. When you say that you're not going to cover Biden, you're going to ask him what flavor ice cream he has. Okay. That's not instead true. of why did Hunter get three and a half million dollars from Moscow? Instead of why is an energy company paying your son one hundred eighty three thousand dollars a month or whatever they're paying him, and he has no experience in energy? You know, you discredit yourself. I don't have to discredit so, you. So this story about Hunter and his laptop, some repair shop found it, 
The source is uh, Steve Bannon and Rudy Giuliani. I don't know anything about and that. I just making, know it's a laptop, and, and they haven't. And you're making this one of the hottest, most important issues in your rallies. I, mean, I don't know about the two gentlemen the you mentioned. This is the important issue in the country. It's right a very now. important issue to and find out whether or not a man's corrupt who's running for president, who's accepted money from China <laughs> and from Ukraine and from Russia. All these yeah, I think that's have an important been issue. Investigated and it's, it's incredible the way you can try and say this and sit there and look me in the eye and say it. A he accepted money, his family, from Russia, from Ukraine from China and from other places. And His brother, who didn't have experience, became a big builder in Iraq without experience. Take a look at what's going on, Leslie. And then you say how that shouldn't be discussed. I'm saying... It's the biggest scandal out there, Leslie. And you think it's the biggest issue to campaign on? I think it's, this, I think it's one of the biggest scandals I've ever seen. And you don't cover it. Because you want to talk about well because it can't be verified. You want to talk I'm about insignificant you. things. I'm telling you. Of course it can be verified. Excuse we, me. We they found the laptop. laptop, Leslie. It Leslie. Can't be verified. What can't be verified? The laptop. Why do you say that? Because even the family verified. hasn't. The family on the laptop. He's gone into hiding for five days. He's. What's interesting is, I've tried to look for. I tried to look up the family denying any of this. And they haven't really denied it at all, which I find fascinating because you would think they would come out and, de 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 you know, at least deny this categorically. But they haven't done that. What they've done, the campaign itself has come back and has said some things that were like, um, I, I read the little official statement from the campaign and it's something like, um, you know, um, th this was from unverifiable sources and we don't endorse that or something to that effect. And it's like, wait a minute, that's not the question. The question isn't whether this is verifiable or not verifiable. The question is, is it his laptop or not? Like, that's the question. Just answer the question. And I find the responses from the campaign to be a, a little bit dodgy. Again, I don't know that Hunter Biden is necessarily as corrupt. I don't know. You know, ex I mean, I say as corrupt because I actually am under the belief that all politicians, Trump included, are somewhat corrupt. I just believe that. Um, however, I mean, how else does Joe Biden live off of, you know, 200 and something thousand dollars for all these years, but, you know, has multiple homes everywhere. I mean, we're so Nancy Pelosi's a gazillionaire, right? And she has been in Congress her whole life. How do you get a net worth of 200 and something million dollars? Something's going on there, obviously. But the, the thing that I doesn't maybe he's not as guilty as Trump is saying that he is. But why are we not questioning this? And it scares me the most that the American public gets duped by this one way or another. And I feel like we as the individuals should be asking more questions. That's my thought. Let me know what you think down in the comments. He's got into hiding. He's preparing for your debate. Oh, it's taken him five days to prepare. I doubt it. I doubt it. Okay. All right. All right. So let's get back to the name calling. Okay. I'm not by the way, that was crazy. Her response there, he's preparing for your debate. See, now she's just carrying water for him. Why didn't you just say, I don't know, or I'm not sure? You'd have to ask his campaign that. She actually defended him just then. See, that was a, that, most people watch this, they don't even think about that. That's not what a, a non-biased journalist would try to do. You wouldn't take up for the guy. She literally defended him, which I thought was amazing. And whether you think it's turning people off. No, I think, look, it is what it is. Stupid. Where are we sitting there? Where, where are we sitting? In the world's welcome. Of what? Of the White House. That's right. How did I get here? How did I get here? We're in the White but House. What are you saying? Oh, but by name calling, you think that no, that's not by name doing? calling, by you know, doing the right thing. And we we have a great record. I mean, we got hit by a pandemic. It wasn't my fault, but it wasn't it was China's fault? But but Leslie, the we're in the White House. The press is very biased, very very biased. And, and I'm not talking You're about anyone. I'm talking us. about, no, yes. no, I'm not. You're discrediting yourself, Leslie. No, you are. Leslie, you're discrediting yourself. When you don't go after Biden, when, with the corruption in the Biden family. Going after Biden? You've asked me five when you don't, times. When you don't go after uh, what happened in the Russia witch hunt, which turned out to be a total phony with no collusion, no collusion whatsoever. 
when you don't do that, you just. I will say this much about the Russia thing. You know, they, they say they spent something like 40 plus million dollars doing that investigation. So when people talk about, you know, what's the president holding back? What's he's covering up? My question is always, what could he have held back? What could he be covering up after 40, 40 something million dollar investigation that basically put all sorts of uh, uh, American government political resources into action, trying to investigate him from the, you know, you would think like, what could the guy be covering up after that? Now, I don't know, but I would think not much. Discredit yourself. The press, you know, is highly discredited right now. You do know that. So you discredit yourself. Half, half the country loves you, but the other half doesn't. And I'm wondering why you don't... They were starting to, Leslie. When the economy was prior to the, just prior to the, you know, to the plague, they were starting to really like, we were all starting to like each other. It was coming together. There was going to be a lot of I heard you say that before, and I don't think okay. that they were coming I mean, I'm together. just telling you. I think we've had to People unity. were calling I'm me. So, unfortunately. People were calling me about coming together. And then we got hit by the plague, and now we're rebuilding it again, and it's going well. And are you, do you think that you do anything to unify the country? I do. I think I do unify the country. I think I will unify the country. It's called success. When our country becomes again... What about the rabid partisanship in the country? Do you take any responsibility for the country being divided against itself? Do you feel that? I'd like not to, but, you know, perhaps everybody has to take a little responsibility for it. But when people put out phony witch hunts, you know, when they spy on your campaign, you have to fight back. And if you don't fight back, you're not sitting here very long. You go back home. I'm, I'm, you go back home to mommy. I'm, 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 I've been listening to you and how long we've been here. And it's just attack, 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 attack. I don't think so. I mean, look, I, I, it's not attack. It is. It's defense. It's defense no, against I'm, attacks. No, you've been attacked. You've been it's defense against the tax. You're very aggressive. I don't think so. I mean, I don't view it that way. I'm defending myself, and I'm defending the institution of the presidency. Very important thing. Can, can you... Um, Hi, Mike. Are you having a good time, Mike, watching? <laughs> you know Mike, right? Our great vice president? I do. You think she'd ask questions like this of... Uh, wow. You, uh, you I don't think so. That. You think can she'd you, ask questions like this of Joe? You, I don't think so. Can you um, can you um, characterize uh, your supporters? Can you? Yeah, I think I can. People that love our country and people that don't want to see the uh, stores get looted and burned down and people that don't want to see riots. And they don't this question I find very interesting. I almost felt like it was an attempt to attack the people who support the president. Now, this bothers me because I felt like it's a little bit of um, it's a little bit of trying to kind of muffle free speech because depending on how this question went this this whole this could have totally aired to the public in a prime time news spot depending on where this question would have went and at that point in time you know what would she have said what would she have done like meaning how would the, could she why ask that question unless you're trying to potentially paint a segment of the population as negative or bad and then you're going to prevent the other segment from wanting to be associated with that segment which by the way if donald trump wins it's because the polls are going to be tremendous tremendously wrong i know his supporters like to say well the polls were wrong last time yes but the polls would have to be even though they actually have gotten a little bit closer in the later stages of the campaign but they've been a long ways away from him winning at this point. But if they end up being wrong, I think it's going to be because of stuff like this where people did not want to actually admit um, that they like Trump or follow Trump or whatever. That That's my belief, if the polls are indeed wrong. Now, I'll tell you, I, th I think the polls aren't that wrong this time. And, you know, right or wrong, I'm not, I'm not under the belief that this presidency is so important that somehow our country is going to be destroyed if Trump gets in office or Biden gets in office. I think we end up ultimately going to a similar destination, a different route. That's kind of the way I would say it. Uh, however, if the polls are wrong, it's because people didn't want to say because of questions like this, 
where the media, you know, you got to wonder like, what are they trying to do here? Are they trying to discourage people? You know, you just, it, I just think this is a poor question. Uh, you know, what, how would you characterize your supporters? I want to see anarchists. Yeah, I think I can. These are people that love our country. You might, and they don't like to see, but you don't see they don't like to see policemen get shot and not be able to defend themselves. They don't like to see rioting in the middle of Fifth Avenue or in the middle of other streets in Portland or other places. And they like it when their president gets the endorsement of virtually every police group and frankly, almost everybody having to do with law and order, positive law and order. But you know what they are? The people that love our country more than anything else and they like to see our country thrive. But do you think that when you hold rallies and encourage people to say, lock her up? Do I don't encourage them. They say it. And you Hillary Clinton, you let, let me just say, do Hillary that. Clinton deleted, she deleted 33,000 emails after she got a subpoena from the United States why, Congress. Why does, why no, no, that's that, illegal. I know, but why, now, why somebody about, doesn't do something but about why it? why is this still an issue? Why do I think it's an issue. They're not going to vote To me, that. it's an issue. She ran last time. I'm not certain how we're going here on this on this question line of questioning. What does this have to do with him currently running for office, which I would assume would be the idea of this interview. However, like, it is clearly known. Everybody knows that Hillary Clinton, in fact, did this. She did not, has not been punished for it at all. I mean, if you or I jaywalk, we go to jail. So I, I find this fascinating. This woman, like this Leslie Stahl, who's interviewing him, doesn't want to pay any attention to that. Now, mind you, he gets investigated for Russia. Forty-something million dollars is spent on an investigation, of which the people in power knew that the $40 million was getting wasted. Your taxpayer dollars, my taxpayer dollars, that pisses me off to no end. They knew it was getting wasted. They knew there was nothing there. It was almost like they were allowing... Anyway, I, don't even want, to, I want to get off that topic because it pisses me off. But then at the same time, Hillary Clinton did in fact do something wrong. Like we don't know how wrong or how bad Joe Biden was involved with whatever may or may not be going on with Hunter because it hasn't actually been investigated. It doesn't look good, but actually actually been, has not been thoroughly investigated. Now, that being said, we know Hillary Clinton did things that were wrong. Like we know that we know. And she's like, well, what does that? she actually says, what does that matter? Excuse me. When they say lock up, it's not me. They say it. It starts. It, it ends up being. It. I don't encourage it. Yes. No. If I mention her name about something, they go crazy. Well, what about the governor of Michigan who had had this plot that people were going to people? I think. I don't know anything about the plot, but I can tell you I'm this. I'm telling you about it. Was plot. our Justice Department that is the one that's helping her? Yeah. My Justice Department, if you call it that. Yeah. It was yeah. our Justice Department that's helping her. And, you know, people aren't so, they're not liking her so much because she's got everybody locked down. Now, we just want a Supreme Court where it's unconstitutional. The only one she doesn't have locked down is her husband, who went sailing and did things that he wasn't supposed to be doing. You are very powerful. And the people who love you, love you with passion. And if you go after somebody, the way you've been going after her, they I take it to after. heart, and they, then there are plots and threats, and the I same with Dr. After. You did. I've helped her. It you was our Justice after. Department you, you that's helping her. her. Oh, I do criticize her, yeah. Well, I think the way she her. locked down Michigan is a disgrace. But the way she you, closed churches in Michigan is a disgrace. I, yeah, I think it's disgraceful what she's done. I do. You want to lock and her And by up. the way, that's other, of course not, that's other, that's other governors also. They happen to be Democrats, and they've closed up their states, and they're causing a lot of problems with these lockdowns. Suicide, drugs, alcohol, a lot of bad things are happening, and they should open up their states. Carefully, but they should open up Well, when states. you say open up, you don't say carefully. You say open up. You're not, you don't have, you don't have oh, I say an carefully. aggressive program to say open up with masks open up with social distancing. The governors run their states. No, we help the them a lot. But the governors you. run their states. You are and the governors have to do what they have to do. But, but when they lock down Michigan, 
She's doing a tremendous disservice. Well, what about same thing with saying, Pennsylvania, what, same thing with North Carolina. What about these are Democrat saying? governors? So two things here. First of all, when he talks, when he puts it on the states, oftentimes when you hear the federal, a federal president, a, a, a federal politician of someone on the federal level say it's up to the states that's kind of a way of there are certain things that should be up to the states but that's kind of a way of taking it away from them right they don't have to address that specific issue so you know they kind of delegate that to someone else and he's sort of doing that here but he's he is in a no-win situation here you know if, if the states don't open you know i just saw where the venetian casino is up for sale las vegas the venetian casino is up for sale the um, the amount of economic destruction that is possible with what we have going on right now something like 60 percent of restaurants may never reopen jc penny's neiman marcus all those have filed bankruptcy their debt is selling for a, around less than two pennies on the dollar many of them may never be able to open again ever even in bankruptcy period so it, it's interesting here because no matter what he's going to get painted as either, you know, he allowed people to die or he allowed people to lose their jobs and he allowed unemployment. It, it really is an interesting no win sort of situation. And she's really just driving it home with this, with this again, he's sort of dodging part of the question. I, I think he's dodging it by delegating it to the States, which I think is where it belongs. But for a politician who wants, if he thought he could make it a political win for him, he would talk about, this is what the state should be doing. He's not going to say that he's going to deflect it to the states because he doesn't want to because he recognized th that th the way this question is worded either way, he's going to most likely have a losing case with time. Because either the economy is going to get sunk or more people are going to die. And the reality is it's probably going to be both, unfortunately. And they're doing a great disservice. What about you saying? Let's open up, but let's wear masks. Let's well, open I up. Say, you don't. You don't. I say I'm not against masks at all. But you're not I for say, that. Sure, I am. Wear them. Wear them. But I also say socially distance. I say all the things. But you know what? Well, look, with you, nothing I said would be any good less. That's not okay? true. Mr. That's okay. That's but in the meantime, true. we're having a record comeback. Because if you look, I just want to point out the fact that we're still on the pandemic. Like she's never let this go. Really, she's always circled back to it constantly. And I think that if I'm trying to be objective, like what's going on here? Why is she doing this? The pandemic is an area that the president doesn't score well with with the general public. And by the way, I don't think any candidate or any president would score well. I mean, there's something negative going on. People want a problem solver to fix a problem. That's the bottom line. But how do you fix a problem when you're dealing with something that's unprecedented? So even if Obama or Biden or George Bush or Ronald Reagan was in there, I think every president who had to deal with this would be getting low marks on this right now. But it's amazing that she keeps hitting it. She keeps hitting it. And I think, I mean, unfortunately, I feel like this is like campaign theater. Like this is some sort of complex, some sort of a complex, um, you know, campaign ad, essentially. And that's... That's unfortunate, but that's what it, it feels like. Am I off base? Let me know down in the comments. We're the fastest growing nation in the world after this pandemic, by far. And we sunk less than any other nation, relatively speaking. And we're coming back very strong, very, very strong. So you you don't want to lock up Governor when did I say lock her up? When did I say lock up the governor? I didn't say lock up the governor. All right, but you why would I lock her up? Well, no. by the way, notice that that was interesting. She she totally was almost pinning something on him there. She knows he never actually said that. It's it's really wild. So you, you wonder like, are you paying attention to what you're saying, lady, or are you trying are you trying to get him in a in a gotcha moment? It's that was kind of wild. So you didn't really say lock her up. No, he's never, ever, ever said it, according to him. And you obviously agree with that because you moved on from your questioning. So why did you ask the question in the first place? Well, why did you say you don't want to lock up the governor? Of course I don't want to lock her up. Why would I lock her because up? Because you were in front of a rally of people saying it, encouraging it. I never said it, Leslie. I never said lock so up the governor. you don't want to lock up the governor. Leslie, it's such a vicious thing you just said. 
I never said lock up the governor of Michigan. I would never say that. Well, did Why you, would I say that? Because well, what about the Biden? She's doing lockdowns. You want to lock up the No, Bidens? I don't want to lock them up, what but they certainly Obama? should be looked at. Obama? You want to lock up Obama? No, I don't want to lock them up, but he spied on my campaign. Do you want to lock Obama up Obama and Biden spied on my campaign. Do you know what that is? Do you know what they did? Do you know how horrible it is what they did? But you it's don't, never you been don't verified. Get it. It's been totally verified, no. Leslie. Sorry. It's, you'll find out, but it's been totally verified. Um, you've all but said that Attorney General Barr should go after President Obama. Now, if you lose, you will be here, okay? You lose. How would you feel if then President Biden went after you? Well, he probably will because I think he's a very dishonest guy. And he probably will look for something. Yeah. Probably will. We'll see. But you know what? Attorney General Barr has been very nice. That's all I can tell you. He's been very nice. Well, he He's been very respectful. Him, yeah. He's been very, no, I didn't criticize him. It's just a different personality. They're very lucky. They're very lucky. Because the evidence is overwhelming. And Attorney General Barr is a great gentleman. It's a great gentleman. They are very lucky. I now, I, I can't tell you what's going to happen. I don't know. I know. Because I purposely like to stay out of it. You know what? I don't like to get involved. I can if I want, but I don't like to get involved. But I think they've been. This is one of those interesting things where he's like, I can if I want. Not really. Not 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 technically. Not legally. It's really put us in a constitutional crisis if you get involved. He knows that. He always is like, Oh, I could do it if I wanted to. Not not really. You could, but you'd put the whole political system in uproar. Very very lucky. Attorney General Barr is a gentleman. You know, I I. I think this is very fascinating where he says Attorney General Barr is a gentleman. I, I think that he doesn't like Barr because I've always felt this way. I've always felt like, is Trump part of the swamp or is Washington that big of a swamp? You know, he's had four years in office. There are some wrongdoings, at least by Hillary Clinton. How come there's not been a real investigation, not even one investigation in all this time? If there was ever a president or presidential candidate at the time that would have brought charges of some sort or at least an investigation, like a legitimate investigation, you would have thought it would have been Donald Trump. But clearly he hasn't been able to get anything brought forward. And if you watch this at all, he's become very frustrated with his Justice Department and I think it's interesting. And I'm like, is, is, is this William Barr not capable either? Is the swamp so thick that it's all tied up in bureaucracy? Like, oh, they're investigating, they're investigating. And the people really calling the shot are, are, you know, basically manipulating this whole situation. You just wonder, like, what's exactly happening here? Why would they not at least, fine, come out and say that, hey, Hillary Clinton's innocent. But why is there not an actual investigation happening? And I feel like here he's like, oh, Barr's a good man. He, he's generous. He's generous. I'm thinking, do you really believe that? I don't I don't think you do. I could be wrong, but I don't think you do. Of course you did. No, I didn't. Of course you did. No, I didn't. Well, then you brought up a lot of subjects that well, I said were I'm inappropriately brought tough up. Questions. They were inappropriately but, brought up right from the beginning. No, your first question was, this is going to be tough questions. Well, it when is. you set up the interview. Your first statement Who's was president. No, don't excuse you think me. You no, should no, be no. Accountable to Listen, the American people. Your first statement to me: This is going to be tough questions. Well, I don't mind that. But when you set up the interview, you didn't say that. You said, "Oh, let's have a lovely interview." And and here's what I do say: So why? You don't ask Joe Biden. I saw your interview with Joe. The interview with I Joe Biden. I never did a Joe. It was Biden. a Joe. The interview, 60 Minutes. I see Joe Biden giving softball after softball. I've seen all of his interviews. He's never been asked a question that's hard. Okay, but forget him for a minute. No, but you your start president, with me. Your president. Excuse me, Leslie, you started with me. Your first statement was, are you ready for tough questions? It's no way to talk. No way to talk. Leslie, one, one second. We're, we're, uh, this is the first warning I think we have five minutes until we have the vice president step in, is that about right? Well, I think we have enough. It, it really, we have enough of it. Yeah, I think we're ready for the vice president now. I think we have enough of it. By the way, this is such a boss move here. The, the girl, the, I want you to listen to this a minute. 
The girl come back. She said, oh, we have the vice president here now. She used strong posture. The guy, the first guy was like, hey, um, you know, we got a few minutes here. Let's get the vice president here. Donald Trump's like, no, we've had enough now. And then in the background, you hear the girl say, oh, the vice president's here. He's ready. Like, she's like, you know, we have to do She just has this very strong posture. They want this interview to happen. They want this to have this full interview to go on 60 Minutes. And I think it's epic right here when he's like, uh, no, he, no matter what she says, he's still like, no, we have enough. I, that's just such a boss move. Like, because I don't think most presidents, I don't think would have been able to, in this case here, handle this situation the way that he did, um, in, in, even ending it. I mean, he just calls it off. He's like, yeah, we're, we're done here. And I want to say one more thing. Leslie talked about, we're not talking about Biden. We're talking about you. But the entire time she's questioning him and it almost feels like you can sense that this is an attack piece. And I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know your thoughts. Let's watch this wrap it up. And then I have one more thing for you at the end. Leslie, one, one second. We're, we're, uh, this is the first warning. I think we have five minutes until we have the vice president step in. Is that about right? Well, I think we have enough. It, it really, we have enough of an interview. I think we're ready for the vice president now. I think we have enough of an interview here. Okay, that's enough. Let's go. Let's go. In fa- so, uh, let's go meet for two seconds, okay? Well, thanks. There you have it, lady. I'd love to know what he was going to say when he says, let's meet for two seconds. I'm just dying to know what he told that person in those two seconds. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. I'm going to, I, I, one of the things that I look for on my channel, my channel is primarily a cryptocurrency channel. I want to help people understand cryptocurrency, understand the technology and understand the potential to be able to earn a tremendous amount of profit by being early in this technology. Um, not investing advice. It's just my belief that there's a potential amount of profit. But at the same time, part of the reason that that technology is coming and the way that it's coming is because people are getting tired of this sort of manipulation, manipulation in their finances, manipulation in politics, manipulation in the media, the press, et cetera. So that, that's, this is part of, and, and I know it's a long overlap, but this is part of why I find this interesting uh, this type of content interesting uh, let me know what you, you what your thoughts are on this type of content also at the very end of the video you'll see i have a i'll put this original video without my commentary if you want to watch that and i'll also include a video about media manipulation i did another video where i covered three news stories where there was obvious media and political manipulation two of them were about media i believe and one of them was uh, political manipulation uh, where there was absolutely where you can tell the Republicans and the Democrats are reading off of a literal teleprompter that goes against what the audience expects them to do, meaning th- their audience. It's, it's really fascinating. you got to watch that video. Hey, do me a favor. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And if I haven't done enough to earn your subscribe, please stick around. I hope to earn your subscribe in the future. Hit that thumbs up if you like this type of content. Thank you so much for watching. And please leave a comment. Hey, this is Crypto Wealth. I'm out.